What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Got a little slimy treat for you guys. If you guys saw that episode where Riley got to wrestle in a 51 pound personal best blue cat, uh, you might have seen in the footage that we were actually catching smaller blue cats trying to make bait. All right. So Riley, I'm going to go there and just hold that carefully. It's pretty tough. These smaller blue cats uh, make for great eating fish, so we're gonna serve them up here with our friends. Bobby and Chris finally made it to Florida. About time. Yeah, yeah, finally. I just filleted some of these guys. I'm gonna leave a couple of these whole. We're gonna throw these two on the grill. Uh, we're gonna do some good old fried catfish, and this is gonna be interesting because I've never had blue cats. Have you guys eaten blue catfish before? Never. Yeah. Most of the catfish that you have in restaurants and markets and such are farm raised channel cats so curious to see how these taste i love channel catfish flathead catfish are really good but uh, a lot of people like eating blue cats too so tune in here we go subscribe to the channel what do you think riley you excited about eating catfish you can be real with them no <laughs> why i'm not big into catfish but i'm willing to try Part of the experience. We'll see how he can make it taste good. No faith. Uh-uh. All right, guys, here we go. Tune in. So I just saved you guys the uh, hassle of watching me fillet some of these smaller ones. And we're gonna grill a couple of these. So I actually just took the head off, gill and gut. Uh, and I'm gonna do this with this bad boy here. It's crazy, these Chesapeake Bay uh, system catfish apparently eat a ton of crabs. Like its guts are full of these little micro crabs. It's so cool. I wonder, I have a pretty strong suspicion this is gonna have an effect on what they taste like. Here, I'm gonna cut this open and pull. <laughs> Look at this. Look at that little crab. Little pinchers and all. Wow. Isn't that crazy, Bob? Yeah. When, when we're eating fish like sheephead and stuff at home, that feed heavily on crustaceans, uh, they tend to be really good eating fish. So I have a strong suspicion that these crab fed blue cats are gonna be good. Uh, but all I'm gonna do is gill and gut, pull the guts out of this thing, uh, and we're gonna throw it on the grill. I enjoy eating fish on the bone, uh, more so than fillets, to be honest. I think it gives you a deeper flavor profile and you tend to harvest more of the of the actual flesh so look at that guts full of crabs and then we're gonna sever the head just to make cooking easier so I've cut it down to the vertebrae on both sides then we're just gonna break its head be careful for those sharp dorsal and pectoral spines on these blue cats oh boy it's a little slippery. Ah, uh, he's gonna be all right. To a little twisty motion. Voila. And then uh, I like to run this under the sink with hot water. I learned that trick watching my grandma back in the day. Uh, it helps take the slime off easier. And uh, we'll just scrape the, the skin and that'll stay on for the cooking process because it peels off way easier once the fish is cooked. But that's it. What do you think, Zeus? It's your namesake. It's a Zeus fish. He is not impressed. No? Not feeling it? He says he wants some butter on it first. <laughs> He's coming back for more. Oh yeah. I think he's pretty impressed. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Can I smell it? Lick it. Do you like it? It is a catfish after all. No? 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 Lick it. Oh yeah. It smells fishy. He's getting excited. I would be too. It's okay, dude. So after we uh, take the slime off the skin, guys, 
uh, on this bigger piece, we're actually going to just give it a couple of cuts to help promote cooking through. So just a couple of cuts like this down to the vertebrae. It'll help it cook evenly in along the same pace as the Stop smaller it, one. On. Z and R BFFs now. Yes, you are. All right, just like that. All right, Bob, let's fire up that grill. All right, let's do it. I'm gonna prep the barbecue uh, catfish for you guys first. And we're actually gonna cook it in some aluminum foil. But check this out. Sea salt, pasture-raised, grass-fed butter. Never had it. Didn't even know it existed. So I'm glad I'm friends with sophisticated people. You excited about this, Riley? Yeah. So what's what's the deal with this grass-fed better like butter? How much better is it? It actually the composition of the oils are completely different. It's much healthier for you, and it's just a cleaner taste. So it's it's actually completely changes the actual oils that are in it. Wow. The fats. Yeah, they're so once you go grass-fed butter, you can't go back to standard Literally, butter. Literally, you never go back. Okay. Let's see what this is all about. Uh, I'm gonna prep the smaller catfish. Do bite my ankle, dude. <laughs> First here, so we're just gonna lay them down in the foil. I'm probably just gonna break this grass-fed butter. He says I smell like a lot of milk. And we're just gonna hit it with some fresh ground pepper, some garlic salt, Lowry's. Some fancy lemon pepper. You don't want to grab it out. Is it out? Yeah. Okay. A very technical application. And this thing's gonna really steam in the barbecue more than anything. Take our aluminium here. I'm gonna wrap it up. Close the crease. It's gonna lay that on that hot barbecue. I went way too big. You did, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I need help sometimes. It's a fact. All right, Bob, you wanna throw these on? Still getting ready to do oh, is it? Yeah. Okay, well, we'll set this aside. Almost there. Cool. That's ready to go. And then next up, we're gonna do some fried catfish a couple ways. So we've got all these catfish fillets, and we're just gonna cut them down to, to size here. We're gonna eat big chunks today. So I'm gonna split these smaller cats into twos. Oh, forgot to take the skin off of this guy. I've seen some pretty wild catfish skinning procedures through the internet, but I skin them just like I do any other fish. Helps to have one of these fillet away fish mats. Keeps the mess off of Chris's kitchen. It gives a little bit more grip. You take that skin right off, just like that. Cut in half. So what's the reasoning and logic behind you not wanting to eat catfish again, Riley? Just curious. Uh, it just reminded me of growing up with uh, having to eat cheap fish. <laughs> <laughs> no love for the catfish. Sorry, cats. No respect. I don't know if catfish is really that cheap though. When you catch them for free, your buddy look at your best friend. Where's the other side? Hey, what up? He's looking at shops over there. He's like, Can I have a catfish nugget? Jeez. So, I've got these things all cut up here, and we're going to pre season the fish and not the batter so you don't waste a bunch of Chris's spices. 
same treatment. Fresh ground black pepper. garlic salt and I like to season the, the fish itself instead of putting it into our batter mixes because you just you get so diluted and lost in translation all right and we'll do some more of this and then there will be mystery lemon pepper and I've got a little egg wash here one egg beaten and I've got a couple of different options here. First of which is going to be some Japanese breadcrumbs. Really easy. It's going to add some nice texture. And you're just going to take your, and actually you can actually mix up all your fillets to get an even coating of spices. So that every bite of fried catfish has got some flavor to it. Take this egg wash, panko, and set that in the tray. It'll be ready to go. Panko is a, a little bit lighter of a breading option than most of the pre-made fish batters. I prefer it myself. But we're gonna give you guys a second option as well. So I'm gonna do half of these panko and half of these with our Bisquick beer batter. When I called Bobby, I was like, get Bisquick if they don't have tempura batter. Well, the fact that it's pancake batter, a little crazy. <laughs> Sure, it'll taste wonderful because who doesn't love pancakes and mm -hmm. who doesn't love fish and chips? That's right. <laughs> Just never mix the two. Yeah, it's, it's all it's... good. Yeah, once you pour a beer into it, it fluffs up beautifully. Awesome. The third catfish option for the night is going to be a beer batter. So, once again, just some standard Bisquick pancake mix. Your favorite beer. I like a medium weight beer myself get that in there find that consistency where it sticks to the fish it's not clumpy but also doesn't just drip right off so that's looking close mm -hmm. You guys are frying fish, make sure you guys are picking an oil with a high smoke point. Peanut oil is great for this dairy application. So, kind of doing like a shallow fry instead of a deep fry. But looks like I can get about a half inch or so peanut oil in there. Let that come to temperature. And we'll be ready to rock. All right, guys, we got this peanut oil up to temperature here. We're gonna lay that in there. Oh yeah, that's gonna cook really fast. These little catfish are really thin. It's not gonna take much to cook them. And always remember to lay the pieces in there away from you. And as you drop these colder fillets in, it's gonna affect the temperature of the oil so that's gonna bring it down pretty quickly that first one is pretty much good to go we're gonna let as much of that oil drip off we use um, paper towels when we have to but i do like using the metal grate it allows the oil to drip away from the fish yeah, I wasn't kidding. That, that, that cooks fast. You don't want it to burn. You can see the difference in color just from the temp swing of dropping those cold fish fillets in there. 
We've had those fillets on ice since we uh, caught them. You're good. <laughs> this is a real video. This is not a Hollywood production. But golden brown, that's actually kind of the color that I like right there. Fish is cooked for sure. And our panko batch is pretty much done. When's the last time you guys had fried catfish? Well, I was working in South Carolina, Charleston, South Carolina. That was on the menu once a week. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a thing. All right, next up, we got the Bisquick. All right, so preseason catfish nuggets. No need for uh, egg wash on this. Beer batter and Bisquick, same principle, lay it away from you. This doesn't cook as quickly as a panko does. So we're gonna let these bathe in this hot peanut oil a little bit longer. Yeah, I bet it was probably channel catfish. I'm sure. Because it's the most readily commercially available. It was a little earthy. Was it? Yeah. But I, I feel like it has a lot to do with what they feed those farm-raised fish. Absolutely. Which is probably like processed liver pellets and such. Real appetizing, I know. But we've got crab-fed blue cats here. So I'm hoping my theory holds true. And then that's going to affect the flavor of this catfish in a positive way. Um, Chris, can you do me a favor? Yeah. Can you help me flip a couple of these oh. continue to... Excuse me. you pull it off or something? Yeah, probably, Bob. You only want to flip them one time. But they're, they're getting there. That's one. See how it puffs up? Mm -hmm. That's that pancake action. Coupled with the beer. Yep. So just some asparagus, very simply made, a little olive oil, threw some shaved parm on it, which creates um, an extra element once it goes in the oven, crisps up, and it provides the salt content and just a little bit of pepper on top. It'll go in for 350 for about 10 to 12 minutes based upon the thickness of the asparagus. Tell them! What are you thinking, Styles? We done. We done. You like the way it looks? Yeah, gorgeous. Nice. How about this asparagus? We're going to chuck it in right now, now that we're... Close to the end. It doesn't take that long. Should I cut up some lemon? Yeah, cut up some lemons. For sure, for sure. So what's the secret? Settings wise. Well, I actually cranked it up to 400. Bo hundo. Maybe 8 to 10 minutes. It just depends how thick the asparagus is. We're going to throw the whole cats on the barbecue here. I'm going to lay them right here over the coals. And oh gosh. Really gently cover that up. Remember, you want some coverage here so you get a little steaming effect. But we're gonna leave those for about 12 to 15 minutes. And that's it. We've got about 15 minutes or so on the queue. I'm gonna pull this catfish off the grill. Nice serving plate here. Boom, there's that little one. This one's gonna be a little bit more challenging. Got about a three pound blue cat here. Oh boy. All right. There's that. Let's get inside. Check that out, guys. Perfect. That's what I like to see. Dude, that grass-fed butter smells amazing. We're just gonna peel this off and eat it right off the fish. Sweet. When I called Bobby, I was like, get Bisquick if they don't have tempura batter. Well, the fact that it's pancake batter 
a little crazy. <laughs> sure, it'll taste wonderful because who doesn't love pancakes and mm -hmm. who doesn't love fish and chips? That's right. <laughs> Just never mix the two. Remember that one time, Bob, we caught that big catfish off of Whitey's Point yep. on a Texas rig worm, bass fishing. Dude, we used to get so excited over that stuff, man. <laughs> we still do. Uh, All right. It is, it is. It's all beautiful. Why is everybody watching you? Because everyone wants to see. <laughs> mm. It's super light. It's cooked perfect. It's Bisquick, amazing. baby. Bisquick. It's super, super light. It's like airy. Mm. Mm. Really good. Really good. Damn, dude, this is good. Okay, I'm trying to get it's light. Mm, that's really. It's amazing. I think you uh, are correct in the fact that this thing was eating crabs because. Does it taste good? The fish it itself. It's very clean. Really. Yeah. Mm. Clean catfish, huh? It, it almost it almost seems like uh, like a fish out of the ocean, you know, like a. I don't know. I don't know what type of fish I'm thinking of, but. Clean. Like a sheephead or a tog here on the yeah, east coast. Yeah, something like that, man. Nice. Mm. Now, what do you think, Miss I Hate Catfish? It was good. So far, so good. I kind of want to try this one, though. Oh, the barbecued one. All right. Can we try that? Yeah, you can. Can you cut a sliver off for us? Uh, just get your fork and just get yourself a big chunk of it. Mm. Yeah. Peel it right off the backbone. That's good, man. Good you like the panko? Panko's my favorite. Mm. Nice. See, like me too. Extra crispy. Yep. Adds a whole nother texture element. For sure, for sure. I like the Bisquick. Look at that. Mm. Mm. Is it actually barbecued? I mean, it was cooked on the barbecue, oh, but it, okay. I mean, it was probably closer to being steamed. It's hot. No, I just got thrown off by barbecue. I thought you can put barbecue sauce on it. I was like, what? That's a negative. No, sir. Negative. So what'd you put on this thing? Uh, we got some grass-fed butter. Mm. All right, so you're probably going to get more of that on the bottom pieces of the fish. Uh, we got so some lemon pepper. Fun. Fresh ground black pepper. Yep, just get in there, Bob. Take yeah. the whole piece, man. We got two fish in there. Ready for you. Hey, babe, how do I do this? So this is where the rib cage is. So, like start where the lateral line would be, like right along the spine, and peel that whole chunk off. There you go. See, see that big chunk that wants to come off? Mmm, that was really good. It's actually pretty clean for a catfish. Because most of the time, catfish kind of have like this weird lingering flavor. Yeah. Definitely yeah, take a take, take a bite right there. Okay, okay. That's good. Really? Look at that. She's actually surprised. She's shocked. That's actually good. You can sell some crab fed catfish with some grass fed butter. You're going to be good to go. Don't you be Riley to cook it. All about that. Maybe. Maybe in the future. Anyways, thank you guys for tuning in. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this catch and cook. A unique one, unique that in how we caught them, unique in what they were eating. It's all about that one moment. And, uh, thanks to my friends for hosting us here in beautiful South Florida. A little bit nicer weather, as you can see from our attire than where we just came from. So, yeah, catch you guys in the next one. And a 17. Bye guys. Heavy waist, the whole dream team. To the pub, did my own thing, started in a rental, now I'm fishing on a you a keyboard pirate, my man, that's how I watch her act. Yeah. It's the bitch, you catch fish, get him in the net, quick cast for another stick. That real deal, raw, uncut, still chasing PBs, cause it's never enough. My drag, yeah. it's the bitch, you catch fish, get him in the net, quick cast for another stick. That real deal, raw, uncut, still chasing PBs, cause it's never enough. Medium light, graphite for the subtlest bites. Sun bright, blue skies, not a cloud in sight. It's dynamite when I drop. And the school ignites, pinning them down on the 